Hi, I'm Mike, an approved BT Redcare installer, and I've been invited to show you how to install Advanced or Advanced Extra. So what do you get? An insert which gives you an overview of the configuration menu and signal strength display, and two window stickers for your customer's property to let everyone know it's protected by Redcare. There's also an insert for your customer. And then there's the hardware, an aerial, some sticky mounting pads, and of course the alarm signalling unit. Advanced and Advanced Extra are dual path systems that use an IP primary path over the customer's broadband or network. They're backed up by dual SIMs connected through 4G or 2G. The hardware you get is the same for Advanced or Advanced Extra, but Advanced Extra comes with faster reporting times. Redcare will set all that up on the platform when you place your order. Let's take a closer look at the unit. It has minus and plus power input terminals. They're between the terminals marked 1 to 8 and 9 to 16 for the alarm pin inputs. Minus is the 0 volt connection and plus is the positive 12 or 24 volt connection. The programming or menu navigation buttons are here and serial connections TXB and RXA are here. You'll find the outputs under comms, funk and fire and dial capture here. The aerial connects here, top right. And the ethernet LAN connection port is here. Here's how to get set up. Before you get cracking, check you've got a really good signal. It's a good idea to do a pre-installation survey. Once you're happy, connect the aerial to the unit. You'll hear a little click when it's in properly. The aerial is designed to stick into place, so remove the backing to fix it in position. Here's a tip, make sure it's pointing vertically to get the best signal. Now, connect the ethernet cable from your customer's broadband or network into the Ethernet port. It's set up to work dynamically, but you can program it for a static IP address using the onboard programming menu or the installer app. To wire the alarm pins, use terminals 1 to 8 and 9 to 16. Some of the pins are already set up to do certain things. Pin 4 is used for opening and closing. You can set up output 2, labelled Funk, to work as a return path signalling output. Pin 11 works in BSIA Form 175 mode. When a positive voltage is put on the input, it generates a test alarm over both paths, as long as there are no path failures. You can set it to become a normal alarm by reconfiguring the comms fault output to one of the other options using the configuration menu programming. I'll come to that later. Pin 13 is for mains fail. It has a seven minute delay on alarms and restores. You can change the delay time using the app or even set it to become a normal alarm pin by setting the delay time to zero. Now wire the comms fault output for the relay terminals. As it's a relay, you can connect it up by following the alarm panel instructions. It'll automatically kick in if either path fails. You can program it to switch if both paths fail or if there's an IP path fault. You can set up and operate a second output labelled Funk remotely using the customer app, or it could become the return path signal relay. This works in conjunction with pin 4. That way, you'll know when the arc has received the open or close. Or you can set it up as a mobile path fault along with the comms output relay as an IP path fault, or as a fire NAC or not acknowledged output. By default though, it's set up as a dual path fault output. You can set up the third output, labelled fire, as a user operated output or a fire ACK or acknowledged output. You can make all these programming changes when the unit is powered up through the configuration menu or the installer app. Now, pre-wire power to the unit. The power input terminals are the centre two screws labelled minus and plus. 
and fix the unit in the panel with the sticky pads that came with it. You can power it up with 12 volts or 24 volts if it's a fire panel. It'll take about five seconds for the OLED display to come on. If you don't do anything else, the display will switch off after about five minutes. When it's off, press and let go of any of the programming buttons to switch it on. The unit will try to connect to the RedCare platform using the IP path and the mobile path as soon as it powers up. If there's a good signal, it'll take a couple of minutes for the mobile path to connect to the platform. If the signal isn't great, it may take a bit longer while the smart roaming kicks in. The IP path will take about two minutes to connect to the platform. So make sure you let the ARC know and put the unit on test. If you don't touch any of the other programming options, you'll get a status update on the display for both the IP and the mobile path. When it's connected, it'll read path IP registered and path mobile registered. As soon as one path is connected, it'll send a series of alarm events to the ARC. Some pin alarms, restores to let them know the unit is back up, and a system reset alarm to let them know the unit has been rebooted. The display will also scroll through and show the signal strength by type, like 4G. It's a bit like the signal strength bars on your mobile. Two or more is good. It also shows the strength in decibels. If there are any pin alarms outstanding, it will show them too. Now you're ready to start programming if you need to. Before you learn the alarm pins, wire them in using terminals marked 1 to 8 and 9 to 16. They need to be in the non-alarm state. For the open close pin 4, that means the system needs to be seen as closed and there must be no active panel tampers if wired in. Start by pressing the pin learn button, the down button, for about five seconds. You'll see notice done on the display. This means the pin learn has finished. Then the display will scroll through IP path status, mobile path status, signal strength and service grade. There should be no alarm showing. If any pin is in alarm, it'll show up on the display. You can check the alarms are showing properly on the display by triggering some alarm outputs and checking that the number appears. For example, you might see a number 4 when the system is open. You can invert any pin in the programming menu or by using the app. You can do extra programming using these three navigation buttons, enter, up and down. To get to the configuration menu, just press and hold enter. When the display shows configuration, press it again and you'll see the first menu option. From here, you can navigate your way around the menu to get to the option you're looking for. There are six main menu options. Inputs, outputs, network, serial panel type, diagnostics and restore default. Use these navigation buttons to get to the menu you want. Then press enter to get to the categories within the menu. Then press enter again. You'll see an asterisk on the display which means you've entered edit mode. Just use the navigation buttons to get to the setting you're looking for. To change the comms fault output so it works when the IP path has a fault, just follow this path. From configuration, press the enter button. You'll see inputs on the display. Now press the down button for output type. Press enter. Output type 1, BSIA 175 will be displayed. And press the enter button again to enter edit mode. Now press the down button until output type 1, IP path fault appears. When you're in edit mode, you can save your settings by holding the enter button until the display says notice saved. To get back to the main configuration menu, so you can get to the other menus, press the down button until back is displayed. Then press enter. This will take you back to output type, where you can navigate to the other menu options using the navigation buttons. You can leave edit mode without saving changes by holding the down button for five seconds. 
This will take you back to the item in the menu you were editing. To leave programming completely without saving changes, press the up button for five seconds. There are two more features you should get to know, dial capture and serial. There's a dial capture feature built into the unit. To use it, connect the alarm panel digi to the connectors marked dial cap here. Dial capture acts as a phone line and accepts the digi dialing out. You don't need to do any programming on the actual unit, but you'll need to program the panel with a dummy ARC phone number and choose the signaling protocol. If there are any issues, you can connect a test phone or listening device to the dial capture inputs to spot them. The unit also has RS-485 and RS-232 capabilities. There are ground, transmit and receive connectors here at the top right of the unit. They double up as RS-485B and A depending on the panel selected in the programming menu. To set this up, go to the configuration menu and pick the panel serial type to change the terminals to either RS-485 or RS-232. Here's an example of how to program the device so it can connect to a Texcom Premier Elite panel using RS-232. When you've finished programming, exit from the menu by pressing the up button for five seconds. If a panel with RS-485 is picked, then TX becomes RS-485B and RX becomes RS-485A. It will send a panel up alarm to the ARC so you can check to make sure it's all working and connected OK. Take a look at the installation guide on the Redcare website to see what compatibility looks like for other panels. Here's a tip. Make sure you use screen cable for the serial and dial capture connections. If you need to know more, get in touch. Our advanced and advanced extra units can also detect cuts and shorts. End of line, known as EOL, will detect a cut, and dual end of line, DEOL, will detect a cut and a short. This will monitor the wiring between the alarm panel and the pins on the unit. This is a requirement of standards when the unit is remote from a fire panel. You can use the input configuration menu to add this function to any pin. Here's an example when adding this function to pin one. Here's how to wire it. It shows the resistor values needed, which you can get from Redcare's online installer shop. Oh, and one more thing. When you finish setting up your unit, don't forget to test all your alarms through to your arc. That's it, you're ready to go.